Hey gang, I'm up in Evanston today, Evanston, Illinois, right along the lakeshore here. Calvary Cemetery, we've been here a few times. Today we're gonna to take a walk and we're gonna go back to the Columbian Exposition, Chicago World's Fair, 1893. A lot of things happened back then, and we're going to talk about one infamous thing that happened. No, it's not the devil in the white city, it's not H. H. Holmes, but it regards a assassination. We had a, a, a mayor who was very well liked, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about him, and we're going to actually walk to the grave of the man that killed him, the assassin. But there's really some question controversy whether this man was sane or not, so we'll talk about it. So let's take a walk and look at some stones, of course, on the way as we usually do. A lot of old stones here at the Calvary. As the train goes by, a lot of Irish here. You don't see a lot of pictures, but a lot of interesting stones nonetheless. Now, it was Carter Harrison Sr. He was mayor of Chicago then. He really was mayor in 1879, and he ran and served several terms. And it was his fifth term that he was serving you know, he, he's really the one that is responsible in a big way for bringing the Columbian Exposition here. Most notable event, pioneering, very, very famous. And the, the city, the people here really, really loved him. And he was progressive and honest and he did a lot of good things. And it was his fifth term and it was, it was beginning in October, I think it was October, I know when he was killed, October 28th, when this happened, that he, well, it was two days before the end of the Columbian Exposition. And there was this guy, Prendergast, Patrick, Patrick Prendergast. Now, Patrick was a basically just a newspaper guy, like a courier. And for some reason, this guy got it in his head that he was going to get a top position with the mayor's office. In fact, he believed that he was the one, or the key one, that helped get the mayor reelected. I don't even think that Carter Harrison knew him but he thought he was going to get the corporation council position. Of course, that's the top, the top lawyer position. So, as I said, on October 28th, 1893, he basically comes to the mayor's house. You know, the mayor has kind of like a little mansion and you could do that in those days. You could just go to the mayor's house, knock on the door, or ring the bell. Maid would come to the door, the maid came to the door, and he said, I wanna see the mayor. And she said, okay, I'll go get him. So, mayor comes down the stairs, and according to the witnesses, which was probably the maid, but I know the coachman, the son, everybody around, there was an argument. And of course, Patrick is probably saying, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this position, right? You're going to give me the position. I helped you, blah, 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 blah. So there were distinct words heard by the mayor saying, no, I won't do that. And with that, shots rang out and he was killed. He died very quickly right in front of the steps inside of his house. Now, Patrick 
Prendergast goes running. He just takes off down Ashland Avenue. And the coachman and the son of the mayor, they go after him. And they catch him. And they get him down. And he doesn't fight. He gives himself up. He's like, okay. And they take him in. Now what I find the interesting part of the story, I mean, it's, you know, it's Chicago history, very interesting, but we came across on Find a Grave the article of the execution. Now before we get into that, and I'm going to read that to you, he, you know, the case, guilty, jurors, immediately guilty. I mean, the defense was basically that he was insane. And he was represented by none other than Clarence Darrow, the famous attorney. But he was found guilty. Clarence Darrow, you know, he was sentenced to death, but Clarence Darrow and team came up with a really, they found this really odd law in the books. Listen to this, if you are deemed insane after the verdict, in other words, you had the trial, whether you're going for insanity or not, but it's after the verdict, if you go insane, the law says you cannot execute the person. So that got it delayed. That got the whole thing delayed. But in the end, in the end, it didn't, the strategy didn't work out. And I believe that's the only case that Clarence Darrow lost. So, he's in prison. Well, he's not in prison, he's in jail here locally. And I'm going to read to you, and, and it's funny the way the writers wrote in those days. Now, I'm just going to pause here. Interesting, interesting monument for Patrick M. O'Brien. He's born in Vermont. And I see a few of these here. These reliefs, sculptures. And it's so sad, they're just melting away. There's another one over there. Let's head that way while I read to you the article. Here is the other stone I was talking about. Just melted away. It looks like, man, see a mustache looks like. Kind of ghostly, huh? Another century, that will be totally gone. So the article, the article says, hanged at Chicago. Assassin Prendergast dies upon the scaffold. His neck was broken. Chicago, July 14th, the brutal murder of Carter Harrison has at last been avenged. Assassin Eugene Patrick Prendergast was hanged here at 11.15 o'clock yesterday. Prendergast walked to the scaffold with a very firm step and his only sign of weakening was deep and heavy breathing. He made no remarks to the public concerning his fate, but the priest said he did not commit the crime with malice. The murder of Mayor Harrison was committed on the night of October 28th last at his home in the city. Prendergast was tried and sentenced to death and would have paid the penalty long ago had it not been for a stay of execution made by Judge Chet Lane. 
His lawyer did all that he could do to save his neck, but at last had to give up. Between six and seven o'clock, Prendergast partook heavily of breakfast, consisting of ham and eggs. He showed a ravenous appetite and, at about nine o'clock, he sent word to Jailer Morris that he was again hungry. The jailer had his prisoner served with another hearty meal, and this Prendergast disposed of quickly, and he seemed to relish it greatly. The assassin talked freely with his spiritual advisors, and several times, apparently fearing they would desert him, remarked, you must stay with me to the end. As the hour for his execution came near, Prendergast showed some signs of slightly increasing nervousness. But on the whole, he was remarkably calm and well collected. Throughout the jail, the officers and others remarked about the behavior, for it was general opinion that he would weaken badly a good while before the hanging. But not so. Prendergast was game to the last. At 11.18, he was shot downward with his head twisted to one side, his neck having apparently been broken. At 11.38, his body was lowered. So that is the story of Patrick Prendergast. And the question is, was he insane or not? And I have to question it because you gotta, you know, you say, yeah, somebody's gotta be nuts to go be an assassin, but didn't even know the mayor. He's a newspaper carrier, courier or whatever. And the fact that, you know, he goes to the door and he's gonna be corporation counsel, definitely gotta be insane in my mind. But in those days, forget it. Forget it. Well, his grave is right here. Right between these monuments. And it's just a simple bar cast in place. Well, it could be precast concrete, but it's, it's just cement. P.T. Prendergast. Now what I find interesting, just looking at this type of marker, when I've been to convict cemeteries, this is kind of what they look like. They're like, like when I was at Leavenworth, they were smaller, they were half the sizes, but it was just kind of that look. So very interesting. Well, not sure, was he sane or was he not? But here he, here he lies and he rests in peace. See you on the next one, everybody.